Welcome back to Educator.com. This lesson is on waves. A wave transfers energy through matter and space. So empty space and where there's no matter in it, meaning no atoms and no molecules. Waves move the energy through the matter without moving the matter itself. So we think about something like an ocean wave, right? And it can go, and if you swim out into the ocean, right, put you right here, floating in the water, when the wave passes you, the energy goes through, but it doesn't actually like move you, right? The energy passes through the water, moves you up and down, but it doesn't actually move you along with that wave. The wave continues on without you, also without most of the water. Waves are produced by something that vibrates. <clears throat> so it could be um, if you stick your finger in water, that's something that's vibrating the water. Um, also could be produced by uh, electrons vibrating. So that would be like an electromagnetic wave. There's lots of different things that can vibrate and lots of different waves that they can form from vibrating. So we'll talk about some of those right now. The two main types of waves are mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. Mechanical waves need a medium to travel through. And what that means is they need matter. And it could be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. But mechanical waves cannot travel through empty space. Electromagnetic waves, the second main type of wave, those can travel through empty space, and they travel best through empty space. Um, they can also travel through matter, but they'll travel a little bit more slowly through the matter. So mechanical waves must have matter, and they travel best through matter. Electromagnetic waves can travel through matter, but they travel best through empty space. So we're going to talk about mechanical waves here. There are two main types of mechanical waves. You have the transverse waves, and we have longitudinal waves, also called compressional waves. So you might see compressional, you might see longitudinal. They're talking about the same thing there. So we'll start with transverse waves. Transverse waves move the matter at right angles to the direction of the wave. And it's kind of a complicated definition, so I'll draw it out for you here kind of moves them up and down, and this is like those ocean waves. The direction of this wave, let's say it's moving to the right, so it kind of flows up and down as it moves to the right, meaning up and down, those are those right angles we're talking about. At right angles to the direction of a wave, if you know from math class, a perpendicular line is at a right angle, so it's straight up and down and straight to the side. So these waves move perpendicular or at right angles to the direction of the wave. So we'll label parts of this wave. We're looking at crests and troughs. Crests, crests are the high point of each wave. And a trough is the low point of the wave. So if we look here, right here is my crest. And right here, down below, is the trough. Okay, so down over here, again, we'd have another trough. And up here, we'd have another crest. Okay, and so on and so on through the entire wave. So a longitudinal wave, or a compressional wave, it moves the matter back and forth in the same direction as the wave. So a, a compressional wave, we like to draw um, it's easiest to draw looking like a slinky. So it's kind of wide, and then it, that's not going to be good. I'll try this again. And then it spreads out a little. And then it's tight together again. And then it spreads out a little. OK. What's the best I can do? But I think you can see where I'm getting at. This compressional wave will go back and forth, squish together and apart, together and apart, as the wave travels through in this direction. So if you had a slinky and you kind of flipped it, 
forward and watch the wave travel through, you would see that slinky as it travels through compress and come apart, compress and come apart. And that's what's happening in a compressional wave. This is where it compresses. This is a compression, it's called. And then where it's spread out, right here, is your rarefaction. Okay, so again, where it's compressed is your compression, and where it spreads out is your rarefaction. Okay, so the compression is the part of the wave where um, the molecules are spread out. I'm sorry, the compression, compressions where their molecules are squished together or compressed. And then the rarefactions are where the molecules spread apart. Okay. Now, if we were to draw this a different way, say uh, we have a compressional wave moving through gases. So what this compressional wave would do, if it's moving in this direction, it's going to squeeze the gas particles together in the compression. So if each one of these little dots is a gas molecule, it's squeezing them together. And then in a rarefaction, the air molecules are spread out kind of like they are normally. And then there will be a compression with the gases, where they're all squished together. And then there will be a rarefaction where they're spread out. So if you can kind of see that. So maybe you would draw it like the gases are squished together and then spread out in a rarefaction, and then squished together and then spread out in a rarefaction. You might see this in liquids, gases. They're spread out like that. Um, compressional waves move best in a solid, so uh, it does actually it squish these particles together. Uh, it's hard to see in a solid, though. <laughs>